So hello and welcome to Phil Gad Market Report. Um, I'm taking my monthly newsletter online and to video. And this month we are going to look at uh, the month of September in Fernie. The weather here is um, pretty phenomenal in this part of the world, in the East Kootenays, in Fernie. You know, we're having a real um, late, late summer and um, everyone's enjoying that. So we want to look back at the month of February and look at some stats. Um, so the market has uh, slowed down a little bit. Um, there's um, 24 current listings. That's 14% down on this time last year. And the number of properties sold uh, is also 14, but that's down 26% on last year. Um, and something a little bit different to my regular monthly uh, email newsletter on the market report. Um, this time I'm looking at the whole of the Fernie market. On my uh, newsletter, I just looked at the um, single family homes. So this time we're looking at everything across the board, single family homes, apartments, condos, land, um, everything that you can think of is uh, thrown into the mix. Um, if you needed that breaking out into specific uh, um, area, say for example, single family homes, please do reach out to me and I'll be happy to supply that to you. So um, what's interesting is, um, you know, people are saying to me at the moment, I'm not going to buy, I'm just going to wait and see until price, prices really go down. Um, well, one, that's an assumption that prices are going to go down. Um, as you can see here, prices are down slightly, 3%. Uh, the sale price uh, on the average across the market in Fernie is 536571 So that's down slightly on last year. But the list price um, is also, uh, not also, but it's up 3%. So the average list price across the across the board in Fernie is five hundred eighty three thousand seven hundred and seven. Now, what is a little bit more telling that we are moving into a shift in market is the fact that uh, days on market and the DOM, as you can see here, is actually up almost fifty percent on last time on this time last year. So what that means is houses are staying on the market 50% longer than they were uh, in September 2021. And another important um, metric is the sale to list ratio. So basically what that's telling us is if we list our house for say a million dollars, like right now, you know, it's almost, we can expect on average uh, a sale that is 93% below that number. So that's very interesting. So that's what basically is, is, is the market's telling us that houses aren't selling for like full or over. They're actually selling like for 93 percent less than the listing price. So that's a very two very interesting stats there that showing that 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 are telling us that the market, the market is changing. Like I say, if you have any questions, you want me to break it out specifically into areas, condos, single family homes, ski homes, please feel free to reach out. But what I'd like to do is uh, bring um, uh, a friend of mine and a business uh, partner into the conversation. Um, it's Mr. Rob Bain, who helps me and my clients um, get uh, pre-approved and get their mortgages all, all in line to, to help us buy properties in Fernie. So I just want to bring Rob in because um, we've got a few questions that I want to talk to Rob about, especially, um, you know, I have some concerns with buyers at the moment who have um, got their pre-approval, but they're concerned that lenders are going to honour their pre-approval in this shifting market. So Rob, um, do, you, do you have some uh, yeah, some insight for, for us on that? Thanks. Thanks for having me, Phil. First of all, uh, you know, it's always great to, to join you and uh, your podcast. But yeah, so so pre-approvals, um, you know, when I'm working with my clients and uh, or our clients, I guess, uh, in, in this scenario, we we will send that that application in for a full uh, full pre-approval. And, and what that means is, you know, the lender is reviewing some of the details of that client, uh, you know, and their their ability to service a mortgage. And when we get a rate hold in place, um, you know, they're they're confirming that they're going to hold that rate for that time period. And, and it varies lender to lender, but usually it's 90 to 120 days. 
Um, and the important time factor, remember with that, is it's 90 to 120 days until they take possession. So that gives a client three to four months to find a house, uh, have an accepted offer on that house, and also take ownership or what we call possession of that property. So right. if that possession date falls outside of that time frame, even by a couple of days, uh, you know, sometimes the lender can be fairly sticky and, and not honor that rate. Uh, so really, it's important to know those timelines uh, for, for your rate hold. Okay, that's interesting. So, yeah, so, so to Pensioner, to so, could you um, just clarify that again? So it's from the time the pre-approval happens to the, the time that the uh, transaction actually closes. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So it's from from when that pre-approval uh, rate hold application is submitted by uh, by your mortgage broker, myself in this scenario. Um, and then, you know, I always advise my clients, I say, look, your rate hold is good until this day. And I'll give them that exact date and I'll, I'll make sure that they're aware that that is the firm ending date of, of that rate. So if they're looking at houses, they have until that time frame to find one for that rate to be honored. Now, if we get you know, uh, a few months into that process and they haven't found a house yet, but they're still really looking, uh, you know, there there is the option of getting a new rate hold before that one expires. However, it would be at current rates at that time. So okay. the rate in this kind of environment would likely be a little bit higher uh, because a couple of months has went by and, and rates are kind of in that increasing uh, category right now. So, you know, that's a discussion that I have with my clients to to find the right solution for them. Okay, that's great. Um, that's a good clarification on that point because you know some people are, um, you know, looking around the world and you know markets such as the UK where um, you know there was all kinds of pandemonium last week when the Bank of England had to step in, um, and and you know some lenders pulling products and and not you know. Uh, do you think there's any danger of that happening in Canada? You know, our, our banking system and, uh, you know, system for mortgages in Canada is, is a little bit unique. We, we have, you know, banks that uh, exist across the entire country, um, you know, which is pretty large in Canada, right? So they're, they're pretty large uh, corporations that are backed, of course, by the Bank of Canada. So, you know, I don't, I don't think that we're anywhere near that type of a situation here. Um, you know, there, there is fear from some people because things have happened, uh, namely in, in the U.S., uh, you know, not too long ago when, when they had some issues with mortgages down there. Um, yeah. But lenders down there are a lot smaller than uh, what we see typically up here in Canada. So I think we're I think we're safe for now. Yeah, great. OK, cool. So what, what do you um, I mean, you know, what, what's your what's your I know no, no one has a crystal ball. Be be fantastic if we did. Uh, probably wouldn't be sat here. I'd be sat on a beach somewhere uh, sipping pina coladas. But um if you know, if you could, if you had to make a prediction on what's going to happen before the end of the year, um, and then into 2023, into 2023 uh, especially, uh, especially um, in regards to interest rates, what, what would uh, what would, what would uh, that be? What would your prediction be? So, I mean, I, I read I read a lot of different articles out there from uh, different economists. Uh, some of them are from from the main banks in Canada, from different lenders, from from other agencies. And uh, you know, I think uh, I think what we're still seeing at this point in time is is most of them are predicting that rates are going to continue to rise. Um, you know, I I'm hoping that uh, that we've seen the the biggest increases already pass over the past six months, and that they're going to start to slow a little bit. Um, but most of them are saying we're going to see another half to three quarter percent before the calendar year is done. So that's uh, by the end of December. Uh, the next rate announcements coming up here. We've got October 26th and December 7th. So those are the next two announcement dates that the Bank of Canada has pushed out. And then they'll, uh, you know, have them again, of course, in 2023. Uh, but the tough the tough thing about really looking looking that far forward uh, into 2023 is, you know, we're, the, the Bank of Canada is really watching inflation closely. And that's that's the purpose of all of these rate increases is to slow down inflation. Because as, as we know, and if you've watched it at all, I mean, the, the consumer price index was up to uh, eight, eight, per, eight points in, in, I think, the June report. Um, and since then, uh, they've released July and August reports, and August was down uh, to, was it seven, I believe, at that point in time. And the next one here will be coming out, the September report will come out uh, on, I think it's October 19th. 
So the mm. week before the rate announcement comes out, they'll see how the, the most recent rate adjustments have um, impacted inflation. And really our target for inflation is to get it down to that one to three point band. Um, and if you look at history, it, it maintained in that band for the most part for you know a, a long time. Uh, but being way up where we are at seven or eight, uh, it's, it's excessive, right? So that's why they're taking these measures and uh, doing all the rate increases to really push that back down to lower that uh, cost of goods for us. Yeah, great. So, what, you, you know, when people come to you, uh, clients come to you at the moment and say, oh, I'm on the fence, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to like pull the trigger now because rates trigger might now. go up. I mean, what's your answer to that? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's very specific to that client's individual situation. Because, you know, if uh, if they don't want to pull the trigger right now because rates are increasing, well, we can we can look at a fixed rate, um, which is going to keep that rate the same for, you know, up to five years, uh, because most lenders offer offer five year fixed terms, which means uh, it doesn't matter what happens with rate. That's that's going to be your rate. If they're a variable rate client that uh, is worried that their rate's going to go up, well, then it's a it's a little bit of a different discussion because it really depends on where they're looking to buy and what the market is doing there. Uh, similar to your report at the start of this podcast, right? And and housing prices, are they going up? Are they going down? Are they staying the same? So when's really the best time for that client to enter that market? And then the other half of it uh, falls a little bit on affordability. And I say that because, you know, qualifying for a mortgage largely depends on how big of a mortgage a client wants, how much other obligations or debt payments they have, and what their income is. So as rates go up for mortgages, it increases the mortgage payment, which makes it a little bit more difficult uh, to qualify for perhaps that size of a mortgage if, if their income um, doesn't allow for that much more, right? So all of those factors, uh, along with more, right? There's credit, there's, uh, you know, the property they're looking to buy, all, all different types of things that come into play. But all of those are also impacting that timing of their purchase right so when i when i have that discussion with a client i try to look at all of that because we want to make a decision that's based on all those variables i don't i don't want them to say i'm you know going to wait six months because i believe house prices are going to fall because what a rate's going to be in six months does your income allow you to afford it now but maybe not then if we see a continued rate increase because that you know then they have a, a i think a tougher decision to make based on what they would like to do yeah, that's awesome. So it just goes to prove, um, you know, at this in this market, you need you need professionals on your side. On your side. You need a team of people <laughs> who can provide you the correct information on exactly what your situation needs. And um, you know, with that information, you can make the absolute best informed decision for your own personal circumstance. So um, that's that's awesome, Rob. Thanks for thanks very much. And um, if anyone does want to discuss uh, the market with myself or Rob, then, um, you know, please, um, uh, all the all our contact information is in the link below, uh, below this video. So please do reach out if you have any questions whatsoever about the market about real estate about mortgages, you know, what what color your next car should be, whatever you want, uh, we'll definitely be able to help. And um, until next month, uh, thanks for listening to our market report. And we'll see you soon.